Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are some romances with the arranged marriage trope. These are romance books where the two main characters are put in an arranged marriage and most of the time their families put them in arranged marriage or whatever the case may be um, and they're forced to marry one another. I do have one previous recommendation video with this trope. I will leave that down below if you would like to watch it but here are 10 more books with this trope. First one I have is Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. This one is one of the most iconic arranged marriage romances currently right now for me when it comes to contemporary reads. This is the romance between Ada and Callum. They are from two rivaling mafia families. One is the Italian mafia and the other is the Irish mafia, I'm pretty sure. Their families do not get along. Um, Ada and her brothers end up crashing Callum's sister's birthday party. Ada actually accidentally sets one of the rooms in the house on fire and Callum is this. He is not happy at all. And their parents' solution for this rivalry in their families is to unite the families and make Ada and Callum get married. There is an age difference in here. I think Ada's uh, 20 or 21 and Callum is 30. Callum is currently trying to like have a better position in life when it comes to politics and whatnot and also when it comes to the mafia so the mafia is like talked about in this book um so i really enjoyed this one and if you want like an enemy to lovers where like truly like really despise each other when they get married like she literally tries to kill him on their wedding day like you should totally pick this one up these two are not happy about their arranged marriage but they go through with it because like their families are forcing them to they both love their families and they do see the benefit that getting married can bring, but they do not want to marry each other at all. Another mafia one that I have is Ruined Secrets by Miss Neva Altaj. This is the fourth book in her Perfectly Imperfect series, which is a mafia romance series, highlighting a lot of disabled, chronically ill, neurodivergent characters. This one's about Isabel and Luca. There is a large age difference between the two of these characters. Ever since uh, Isabella was a little girl and Luca ended up saving her from drowning in a pool, she has been absolutely in love with him. She's been pining from afar, even like when she was a teenager and he was married, like she still pined after him, but she knew like, like, oh, it's never, never gonna happen, but like a girl can dream, you know? But then Luca ends up finding out his wife has cheated on him and divorces his wife. And Luca is kind of like the right-hand man to the leader of um, their mafia family. And that guy is actually like, on his deathbed and that is Isabella's grandfather. And her grandfather's dying wish is for them to get married. Isabella is absolutely thrilled and Luca could not be more mortified. Isabella is I think 18 or 19 and Luca is in his 30s and he's like, I am marrying a child, this is so wrong. Um, and he finds it completely wrong to be so attracted to her. He berates himself all the time that how attracted he is to this woman. And things get even more complicated when Luca gets in a um, accident and ends up developing amnesia. That's all this one, but these two are arranged to marry each other because of her grandfather. Um, her grandfather tells them to do it. So um, I really love this one. It's one of my favorites in the Perfectly Imperfect series. Like speaking of the Perfectly Imperfect series, Silent Lies, which is her latest book, also has this trope in it. Both characters are from rivaling mafia families, kind of like Brutal Prince, um, but they want a alliance between the two. And so both of these characters end up getting married, even though they don't necessarily want to. The hero at first is very intrigued by our heroine because she's this very loud and um, bright character in a midst of like black, you know, like the mafia world. Um, she wears a lot of bright, fun, unique clothes that are very eye-catching to say the least. And he can't help but be fascinated by this woman. And um, she thinks he's hot, so there's that. <laughs> um, but the representation in this one is that the hero is hard of hearing. He lost his hearing due to a fire and an accident that he was in when a child, um, partial hearing in one of his ears. And um, I love this heroine too because she purposefully like make sure to speak in the ear that can um, hear sound. Anyway, so the two of them do have to get an arranged marriage. Their families force them to marry each other. The heroine more so has more pressure because the mafia boss of her family tells her to spy on the hero and his family and report back to him. So yeah, throughout this arranged marriage, they end up actually falling in love with each other. If you want a fantasy romance, I obviously have The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen. I feel like this one is very well known in the fantasy romance community as being the arranged marriage book. This one's about Lara and Arin. So Lara, her whole entire life, along with her sisters, have been trained to become a wife to a king and um, find out all the secrets about them and kill them 
basically. Laura has been chosen to be the bride to King Arryn, a neighboring king in a kingdom that Laura's father absolutely covets, and their two families arrange for them to get married. Arryn obviously does not know about her deception or her ulterior motives for marrying him. And then she actually ends up falling in love with Arryn and realizing that her father has been lying to her her entire life because she always thought that Arryn and his people were in the wrong when there's more to the story going on here. Anyway, um, I really loved this one. It is a duet, so you have to read the next one in this series in order to get your happily ever after. But if you want a fantasy romance read with a great arranged marriage trope that is really fun to read, but also super immersive, like the audiobooks in here, fantastic. I think you can listen to them on Audible Plus if you have an Audible Plus subscription. Um, but if you wanna read one of those, this one's, this one's it. If you want a fantasy romance that has a little also monster aspect to it, I have The Half Orcs Maiden Bride by Miss Ruby Dixon. This one is about Yolanthe, our heroine on the cover, and she's kind of the black sheep of her family in a sense. Her father doesn't really care that she's in the house, doesn't really care for her, sees her as a burden, and all of her sisters are petite, small, and already been married off, already have found husbands, and Yolanthe is tall and large and really wants a husband like the white picket fence kind of lifestyle but doesn't think a man would ever want her a man's never really shown their interest in her um she's kind of accepted the fact that she's going to be a spinster all her life but then her father comes home one day tells her pack all your stuff up i'm taking you to your husband i found a husband for you he ends up taking her all the way across this fantasy realm and into the arms of a half orc man she was not expecting that whatsoever so it's the romance between her and this half orc that she's been arranged to marry even though at the beginning of this story when they first meet he's like if you don't want to marry me like there is no pressure at all i don't want you to feel like you're forced into this um so that's like a unique aspect in here even though these two technically are arranged to be married she still has a choice in whether or not she wants to marry him the marriage customs in here 10 out of 10 would recommend they're so good i love this fantasy world ruby has written a few books in this fantasy world but this one is a total standalone it has nothing to do with the other books that she's written i do recommend this one if you want like arranged marriage with awesome marriage customs but it's also like monster romance another monster one that i have is wet to jack frost by Layla fay i read this one in december this one's also kind of like mail order bride situation this heroine lives in a world world that's kind of like earth except where now you have a bride agency company where you like submit your data and your dna and stuff um to them and they will find your perfect genetic match and partner with a monster from another realm and y'all will get married this isn't just a place for you to meet your perfect match like you have to marry them when you go there it's arranged to be married you're arranged to be married to this person anyway so our heroine is down on her luck she needs some money and the only thing she can think of is to apply to be a bride in this program the hero of the story is a jack frost character and one night a few nights ago drunkenly um his friends convinced him to submit all of his data and dna and stuff to the agency like for craps and giggles you know what i mean and um he gets a phone call one day saying that they found his match and he's like oh no i'm too young to be married jack like the frost people can live to be like thousands of years old and he's like 200 something and he says i'm too young i cannot get married no and so he goes to the agency to like basically say like "Ooh, jk not getting married not happening i am too young but then right when he sees the heroine he is completely smitten by her she immediately comes up to him and is like you're late for our wedding i was expecting you hours ago where were you it's like berating him and he uh maybe really likes the fact that she's berating him so <laughs> It's really fun. I really did enjoy this monster romance. And another monster one that I have is Monster's Bride by R.K. Pierce. This is another situation where you have two rivaling kingdoms making their children get married in order to form an alliance. So Arissa is a human princess who is forced to marry her kingdom's rival, uh, Prince Noor from the Minotaur Kingdom. Both of these characters are not happy about their situation. They do not want to get married, especially to somebody from their rivaling kingdom. But they have to get married. They both have stipulations and like things they will get in... In, in the fact that they get married to one another. And so yeah, they have to learn married life and how to live together and rule a kingdom in the midst of hating each other. This one kind of reminded me of Radiance by Grace Draven. So if you like that one, maybe pick this one up. And the last three books that I have are all historical romances. So first is A Nun for the Viking Warrior by Lucy Morris. Y'all do not let this cover like trip you up. Some people like see this type of like hard looking cover and they're like, I'm not gonna read that. Y'all, this book is so good. Our heroine of the story is this daughter to a very wealthy English man and uh she has grown up with his abuse her entire life she does not like men she's scared of men because of what he's done to her she ends up escaping to a convent and is destined like destined herself to become a nun she's like I'm going to be a nun I'm going to take my vows very soon but just before she can take her vows 
the nunnery's doors get like blown in by the hero and his men. He is a Viking and he claims that her father arranged for them to get married and he's there to collect her and bring her to their wedding essentially and come live with him and his people. That's all I wanna leave you with, but it is so good. I love this one a lot. Another historical is Never Live a Highlander by Maya Banks. I really enjoyed this one. Our heroine of this story, she's been passed along these brothers in the McCabe family. This is the third book in the series. So the hero from book one was supposed to marry her. Then he found the love of his life. So then she got passed on to the second brother who ended up getting married to someone else and finding the love of his life. And so then the third brother in the family is like, fine, I'll marry her. Like I need to marry her. Our family needs this alliance. So they get married for an alliance. So the heroine's been like passed along with all these brothers, right? Anyway, so the heroine and the hero don't get off on the right foot because the hero has all these visions or expectations that he has for women that he thinks that women should follow, like cook, clean, take care of the house household and all that stuff. You know what I mean? but the heroine could not be farther than that type of woman. She loves to fight and spar with her father's men and wear britches and do all these manly things. And he's like shocked. He's like, who is this woman? What is she doing? Um, so it's them trying to figure out their relationship, very dynamic relationship um, in the midst of their arranged marriage. And the last one that I have is Charming, A Runaway Duke by Maggie Dallin. The heroine of the story has been arranged to marry this Duke for years she's never met him doesn't know what he looks like all she knows is that she's engaged to him and their families arranged for them to get married since they were almost like children you know she's been kind of ridiculed by the ton because this duke has not come to marry her in years she's like almost well past like marriage mart days according to them and they're like why isn't this duke coming for you there's obviously something wrong with you if this duke won't marry you and the heroine at this point is really sick of this and she just wants this duke to come and marry her. She's sick of it. The duke eventually does come, but he has disguised himself as a, I think, a footman or a valet. I can't really remember um, because he wants to see if the heroine can fall in love with him for who he truly is and not his title. So that's this one. But these two are arranged to marry even though they fall for each other outside of that arranged marriage concept. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 romances with the arranged marriage trope. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, I would love to know. And also let me know down below what your favorites are with this trope as well. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me an orange heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.